I'm Jordan Dazon and I'm a scientist here at Thermo Fisher Scientific and we're doing a live training today on neural induction using our neural induction media from human pluripotent stem cells to neural stem cells and then subsequently we're going to do a neuronal differentiation using our B27 and B27 plus neuronal culture systems. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, do neural induction using our neural induction media. So we have a starting cell type over here on the EVOS. So if we look at this image on the EVOS, this is our starting PSCs. They're about 70 to 90 percent confluent. Um, what that means is that you see they're pretty much touching, the colonies are touching each other, um, but they're also very clean. So this is a feeder-free culture without spontaneous differentiation. That's key because if you have um, not a not so clean culture, um, sometimes the neural induction won't, won't be as specific and you'll get some contaminating non-neuronal cell types at the end. So you just want to make sure to have that clear um, culture throughout and there's no differentiating stem cells in there. So the first step on neuronal culture is actually day one or day zero. You're going to replate your um, PSC culture back into the same um, matrix that you started with. So for example, I have mine in Stemflex and Geltrex. So I'm just going to replate um, in, stem in Stemflex and Geltrex again at 300K per six well plate. So I have this right here. So the next day, which be, would be day one, you want about a culture that's going to be about 15 to 25 percent confluent. That's the range. Um, and it looks like we've got this here. So day one, after you have replated your PSCs, you're actually going to change into your neural induction media. And our neural induction media is basically just our neural induction supplement plus our neurobasal media. So once we change our media with that, you're going to change the media two mils per well on that day one, and then you're also going to change the media day two, day four, and day six. And actually at day seven, you should have your, your full neuronal stem cell population. So I actually have an example right here for you guys. If we go back on the EVOs, you guys can see that they, these are day seven induced neural stem cells. So they're very, very concentrated and dense. This is a good sign because neural stem cells are, are quite small. So um, they'll kind of clump on top of each other too. You'll see like this mountainous structure. But what you don't want to see is, is more spread out larger cell types in this. That could mean that you have some non-neuronal cells. But here this looks like it's a pretty consistent, dense population, which is what exactly what we want. So once you have your, your day seven, that, that we make those neural stem cells P0, you want to replate. So we'll actually just replate with Accutase. And I'll give you an example of how they should look once they're replated. So if we go back on the EVOS, these are some good replated neural stem cells right here. So we usually plate a million per six well, which is what we've got right here. And they're, they're smaller. Um, and they're quite dense as well. And you can already see that some of the, the cell types have little extending prophecies, which is what we want. So these will actually get confluent um, around four to six days after you plate at this one million per well. Um, sometimes uh, if you start with a really nice PSC culture, they'll actually proliferate a lot faster. So you can even get um, a full NSC dense well from by around two to three days and what I mean by that is it could range anywhere from 10 million to 20 million to even 30 million per well of a six well plate so if you're anywhere in that target range that's good that means you've got some some great neural induction in your NSEs. So now that we've talked about neural induction a little bit and how to get our NSCs from our pluripotent stem cell cultures we're going to dive in and we're going to do a neuronal differentiation. So the first step in neuronal differentiation is you're going to take your already dense culture of your, your NSCs. So say I just the ones I just showed you go about four to six days till they're confluent and ready to passage. At this point, you can either freeze them down and create a bank of NSCs or you can um, put them in maturation media, which is what we're going to do right now. So the first step is we're going to wash 
with PBS minus minus, so that's minus calcium minus magnesium. So we're going to make sure that we are going to aspirate off that spent medium. And then you're going to add a w one mil per six well of your PBS minus minus. And then we are going to aspirate that off again. And then now we're going to add one mil of our Stem Pro Accutase cell dissociation reagent. So we actually use Stem Pro Accutase because we want to singularize the cells. So once we add the Accutase on, this is actually going to go in the incubator and incubate at 37 degrees for about 5 to 8 minutes. So I have a cell well right here that I already previously Accutased. And if you guys come over to the EVOS real quick, you can see they're all pretty singularized and they're floating around now. So they're no longer attached to the well. If you still find that your cells are attached because of starting a really dense NSC culture, you can also use a cell scraper to scrape off the rest. But this looks pretty good. So now from here, we're gonna add one mil of our PBS minus minus to our well to inactivate the enzyme. And then you make you want to make sure you just kind of go around the well to get all the cell clumps off if you're not going to use a cell scraper. And then we're going to transfer all this to a 15 mil conical. And then we're also going to add an additional 5 to 10 mils, so I'm going to add 5 mils. Just to make sure that enzyme is deactivated and we can get a nice wash of PBS minus minus. So once we add all those, we're actually going to spin our cells down right now. So our cells are going to spin at 300 times G for 5 minutes. Um, so while that's spinning down, this is a good time to talk about our B27 and B27 plus neuronal culture systems and how they differ. So classically, people have been using our B27 um, culture systems for more than 25 years for their in vitro neuronal studies. We just developed this B27 plus culture system, which is about a year old. And there's actually quite a bit of advantages to the system over B27. Um, some of those advantages include improved neuronal survival. So you can get more than 50% survival of your neurons um, versus culture one, I mean not culture one, uh, B27 classic. And then also there's accelerated neuron outgrowth. Um, we also see a lot of better electrical activity in these um, B27 plus media systems versus B27 and other competitors out there. So what I mean by that is we see more neuronal network activity, more firing, um, more coverage. Um, this, is, this is over um, multi-electrode array studies. So more coverage over the electrodes in the well. So all these things combined show that we have improved neuronal maturity in our B27 plus systems which is a very neat thing to see because then we can get faster results um, and quicker results for our studies so we don't have to wait as long for our neurons to mature um, as I'm sure, I'm sure most of you who do in vitro studies out there typically wait weeks and months for those neurons to be mature enough to run these in vitro assays. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is our Culture One supplement. So I'm actually going to use this today as well. 
So our Culture One supplement is a really cool supplement that is designed to eliminate the neuronal cells in ne our neuronal stem cells um, in neuronal maturation. So commonly, if you plate your NSCs for maturation, sometimes you get a extending proliferation of those neuronal stem cells in the culture, um, which results in clumping of the neurons at the end of at the end of your time point. So. We have developed Culture One, which eliminates that uh, neural stem cell growth so that those mature neurons are the only ones in the media, and you have those, you eliminate those non neuronal contaminating cell types. So, you guys will see some, later today a couple images using our Culture One and how um, it's actually great, especially if you want to do some endpoint imaging assays. Um, that way, you can see. Um, you can select individually neurons, which is really good for like high throughput screening um, and high throughput assays. So uh, the last thing I want to mention is how you make the media. So there, there's two different ways to make. So their B27 Classic is simple. It's just our neurobasal media and then our B27 supplement. Um, you can also add our 1X Culture 1, which I was just talking about. Um, and then we have 1x glutamax supplement and then 200 millimolar ascorbic acid. So it's quite easy, just five ingredients or four ingredients if you don't want to put culture one um, to make your media. Um, and then for B27 plus media, it's the same media formulation, but instead of, B, instead of neurobasal, you're going to use neurobasal plus. And then instead of B27 supplement, you're going to use B27 plus. So those are the two differences between the two medias. However, for the purposes today, we actually recommend that if you want to use the B27 Plus media system, you start out culturing in, in B27 for about three to seven days and then transfer over to our B27 Plus media system. So we're going to do that today for you guys. And it looks like our cells are done. So once we have our pelleted cells, the next step would be to aspirate off that we just have our cell pellet down below. And then we're going to actually resuspend in either one or two mils of our maturation media, depending on how many cells we have. So I'm just going to use one mil right now. Make sure you pipette up and down so that those cells are still singularized and evenly distributed in this media. And then we're actually going to count our cells. So we have our Countess 2 I'm going to use. So we have the, actually have these pre-made Countess 2 slides. So I'm just going to rip it out of the package. And then I'm going to take 10 microliters of our cell suspension. And add it to 10 microliters of tripan blue. So tripan blue permeates the membrane of dead cells, being able to give us a live cell stain and a dead cell stain. So once I pipette this up, up and down nicely, we're going to take 10 microliters of that and insert it into the slide. And right here, you guys can see it's inserted nicely into the slide. So I'm going to walk over here to the Countess 2 and insert our slide in. Oh, one second. Insert slide. You're just going to follow the prompts. Um, it's actually going to auto-focus for you, which it's doing right now. If it doesn't autofocus for you, it has a nice little manual focus over here and then also manual zoom. So you have those two options if your cell type isn't focused as well. So right here, it looks like it's focused. You press capture and it's automatically going to count based off of the tripan blue. So it's going to give us a total count and then a live count and a dead count, which you can see right here. So it's about 84% live, 16% dead. So not too bad. So once we do that and we get our live cell count, we can go over here and then plate our neurons. So I have an already coated poly D lysine um, and double coated mouse laminin plate. So that's 
uh, 50 micrograms per milliliters of poly D laminin and then uh, three micrograms per mil of mouse laminin. So you're gonna double coat those. And then once I have my double coating, I'm going to count the appropriate amount of cells. So for B27 and culture one supplement, we recommend about um, four times 10 to the four per, per cell or per um, centimeter squared. So four times 10 to the four cells per centimeter squared, um, which equates to about a million cells per, per six well plate. So per one well of a six well. So I'm actually going to aspirate off this mouse laminin. And then I'm going to get another epidorf tube and take my 1 million cells from my resuspension. Add an additional mil of media. So I've got one mil of our cells in our media, and then a typical amount of media for a six well is two mils. So I'm gonna add another media, or another mil of our B27 classic media. And then now I can add my cell suspension. You never wanna add cells directly to the well without media already in it. So that's why I already put some media in the well for you guys. Perfect, so once those are added, these can actually go in the incubator. And you can start the neuronal maturation process. So we actually observe maturation markers using our B27, plus, B27 and B27 plus media systems. Um, even after three days in culture, um, once you plate for maturation, um, Today I actually have an example of a day 10. So if we go over to the Evos, I'm gonna have to go to 10X to see this. And brighten that up a little bit. So these are our day 10 neurons in B27 and culture one media. And then at day five, we transferred over to B27 plus. So five days in B27, five days in B27 plus. Um, you guys can see that it's a nice monolayer. There's minimal cell clumping. Um, you also see very elongated axons and they're very connected. It's, it's, a, it's a nice culture, especially for imaging purposes. Um, and then also after you do your um, right field photos to get some, you wanna do some QC, which is a, a good thing to do when you're making neurons for the first time. So I actually have a PowerPoint slide to show you guys right now of our neuronal QC. So that this slide right here on the left hand side, we are showing um, our same, same neuronal culture stained with synaptophysin and MAP2. Um, and those are two um, commonly used neuronal markers, I'm sure you guys are aware. Um, and then on the right hand side, we have beta-3 tubulin or 2J1, which is also a common neuronal marker. So you guys can see that they're very mature at day 10. Um, it's a very uh, homogeneous population of neurons, so there's not a lot of um, neuronal glial. Everything, stains, everything that is stained seems to be neuronal and that's the work of our uh, Culture One and B27 Plus system. So um, after the slide, which looks like we're done, um, that is the end of our live training on neuronal differentiation using our B27 and B27 Plus culture systems. Um, I'll be ready to take any questions you guys may have. All right, thank you, Jordan. It was very nice 
demonstration of how we can make neurons out of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. So we received a number of questions around the process starting from iPSC all the way to neurons. So could you speak a little bit more about the, um, the use of B27 in the specification of of the um, NSEs because it wasn't very clear from the audience whether B27 is actually necessary during NSE generation or not. So B27 is not necessary for the the match or the induction from PSCs to neural stem cells. So that's actually our neural induction supplement. So you, we provide it online on our website. It comes as the neural induction supplement plus our neurobasal media, so there's actually no B27. And then that media combined for the, the length of the seven days will transition those PSCs to neural stem cells. Okay, thank you. So then speaking a bit more about the NSCs themselves, so, so we know that they're most, mostly of a um, hindbrain hind phenotype. But there's a couple of questions around how, how do you know that your NSC specification actually worked well? What kind of markers can we use to make sure it was successful? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do do um, immunocytochemistry at the end of that day seven. So once you guys replate, and I showed you that, that one million per well replated, um, that's a good time to do some ICC staining. So we recommend staining for SOX2, PAX, Six, SOX1 and Nestin, which are all common neural stem cell markers. And then we also do provide on our website a nice kit of all of these, um, all these antibodies combined along with their secondary stains for you guys for convenience. So you can purchase that um, and just stain your neural stem cells with that kit and you'll have all your, your QC. So along the same lines, do you know how efficient the conversion to NSEs is? For example, have you looked at whether there's any remaining pluripotent stem cells in that NSE culture? So it is possible to get remaining pluripotent stem cells in the culture, and this goes back to the beginning of the lecture when I was discussing um, the starting culture and how, uh, mo or how homogenous that should be. So if you have a homogenous culture with um, minimal to no differentiation um, in a feeder-free environment, that should successfully transmit to almost 100% of neural induction. So as long as you have a good starting culture, you should have success of about 100%. All right, thank you. Um, so now moving on to maturing the NSCs into neurons. So there seems to be a little bit of confusion still around what is in the maturation medium. So could you maybe elaborate a little bit more about what the maturation medium contains? Yeah, of course. So our maturation medium, so let's just use classical B27 as an example. So we use our neurobasal um, basal medium as, as the basal medium, and then we spike it with our B27 supplement, which is a 50X supplement. Um, and then you can, you may or may not uh, introduce the culture one supplement that I was discussing. So that's that would be 100X. And then we like to add glutamax supplement and then 200 millimolar ascorbic acid. Okay, so could you elaborate a little bit more about what the purpose of the culture one supplement is? Yeah, of course. So our culture one supplement is a really nice supplement if you want to force the cells into a clean neuronal differentiation. So a lot of the time in a lot of homebrew media systems, we find that once you plate for maturation, those neural stem cells still tend to linger and proliferate um, quite fast in the media. And then what you'll get is a lot of cell clumps um, in, your, in your final in vitro neuronal cultures. So culture one eliminates the proliferation at the, of the NSCs at that first stage. So then the only cells in the culture should be mature neurons. All right, and then going further into the supplements in the maturation medium, we have quite a few questions around the difference between B27 and B27 plus. So could you maybe uh, discuss a little bit what the differences are, if any, and then explain why would you use one over the other? 
That's a great question. So the differences in our B27 and B27 Plus supplement is our B27 Plus accelerates neuronal growth quite a bit. So it, it speeds up neuronal maturation and it um, increases neuronal survival. So um, a lot of the time in your culture, once you replay for NSCs, you'll have, or you'll replay the NSCs into neuronal maturation, you'll have quite a bit of cell death and then the remaining neurons will be there to grow. Um, this B27 Plus will eliminate that cell death a little more and you'll have more neurons in your cultures. So you'll, you'll be able to make less cultures and have more neurons. And then they also accelerate maturity and we base this off of a couple different tests we have, but um, some good examples are accelerated neuron outgrowth, um, which is accelerated um, compared to our B27 media as well as competitors. And then also um, using multi-electrode array, we have shown that it has spontaneous activity and neural network activity that's been increased compared to competitors in B27. So that's just adding to the fact that it's maturing faster. Okay. Thank you, Jordan. So there's um, someone online here that is still a little bit confused about the difference between the induction medium and the maturation medium. So could you please remind again on the key differences between the two media? Of course. So our neural induction medium, so that's induction from pluripotent stem cells to neural stem cells, that includes our neurobasal medium and our neural induction supplement. So you can buy this package together on our website. Um, and then the maturation medium is our same basal medium, neurobasal medium, but it has our B27 or B27 plus supplement, um, our Culture One, Glutamax, and ascorbic acid. So in, in, the, in, the, neural stem, in the neural induction medium, it's an, it's an induction supplement. It's not B27 supplement. All right, thank you. So to kind of end, end the, the train of the differentiation steps, we get um, have a few questions about the neurons that you get out at the end. So could you speak a little bit more about their electrical activity and if you have any idea of what kind of neurons are in those cultures, it would be great if you could address that as well. Of course. So in using our B27 or B27 plus culture systems, um, we tend to get a more high brain specific, but it is a mixed population of neurons. So we have stained for glutaminergic as well as GABAergic markers, and we show both. So there's both excitatory and inhibitory neurons in the, in the, in the culture system. Um, however, it has been shown that to, if you use our neural induction media to make um, neural stem cells, you can target using different media systems, different types of neurons. So if you still want to use our neural induction supplement to create NSCs, um, we've shown you can make dopaminergic neurons out of them and motor neurons out of them um, and a couple of other specific types of neurons. So if, if more hindbrain specific mixed population neurons isn't your goal, you can still use the neural induction kit to make NSCs um, and specify to the direct um, differentiation that you would like. So have you used these neurons in a high content type environment where you're using them for screening? Where, where what? Sorry. Sorry, have you used the neurons in high content type assays for screening? Yes, so we have used these neurons using our Cell Insight, um, which is our, our Cell Insight CX5 and CX7, which are our high throughput imaging systems. So they. These neurons are very clear and they're very homogeneous and they're spread out. So our system actually um, finds a cell body before it finds axons and other, other types of stains depending on what, what assay you're running. So because this population is very sparse and uniform, they provide a perfect thing for, for high throughput imaging. All right. Thank you, Jordan. That was very informative. I would also like to thank our active online participants and we hope to see you soon at one of our other 24 hour of stem cell sessions. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I've had a great time answering your questions about our B27 and B27 plus neuronal systems.